Welcome to our lecture online. Here's our second word problem and let's read it first. We have three numbers, you're supposed to find them. And the three numbers are such that the difference of the first and the second number equals negative one. The sum of the second number and, the, and three times the third number equals positive one. And the difference of twice the first number and the third number equals negative seven. So we have x, y, and z being the first, the second, and the third number. And we're going to use Kramer's rule to solve that. And to find x, y, and z with Kramer's rule, we have d sub x over d, d sub y over d, and d sub z over d, d being the determinant. But what does that really mean? How do you do Kramer's rule? Well, first, of course, we need to find three equations that relate the three variables to one another. So again, it says that the difference of the first and the second number equals negative one. So the first number and the second number x and y, so x minus y is equal to negative one. And notice I left some space for the z variable that wasn't there. Then they tell us that the sum of the second number and three times the third number equals one. So the second number, y, plus three times the third number, three times z, equals the positive one. And finally, the difference of twice the first number and the third number equals negative seven. So twice the first number minus the third number equals negative seven. And so there are our three equations and three unknowns. So first we need to find the determinant D and D is, looks like a matrix. D is equal to, but instead of having little brackets, we put little vertical lines and we plop down all the coefficients of X, Y, and Z of the three equations. So we have one, negative one and zero because there's no Z there. We have zero, one, and three. And then we have two, zero, and negative one. And notice because we have three zeros there, it makes it easy to solve the problem using Kramer's rule. So the way this works is we take the first number up here, one, and we multiply that times the determinant of the two of the four numbers that are left when we get rid of the row and the column like this. We then have one, three, zero, negative one. We have one, three, zero, and negative one. Then we take the negative of the second one, so it would be negative and negative one times, oop, and this should be straight lines. Notice if you get rid of this row and this column, you're left with those four numbers right there. So this would be straight lines, so like this. And we have zero, two on the left, and we have three and negative one on the right. And then we go plus the third number but that's a zero, so it's zero times, and I'll just go ahead and put it down, but of course, since we're multiplying times zero, we get nothing. But when we get rid of this row and this column, you're left with those four numbers right there. So you're left with zero, two, and a one and a zero. All right, so now we work all that out. So this is equal to one times you multiply those two together and subtract when you multiply those together. So one times negative one is negative one. And of course the product that this is zero, so we end up with a negative one. Minus times the minus is plus one times the product of these two minus the product of those two. So that gives you zero and this gives you minus six. And you get zero for the third because it's zero times whatever that is equal to. So you don't have to work that out. So you end up with minus one minus six, that is equal to minus seven. So that means that D, the quantity in the denominator, the determinant, is equal to negative seven. So we can write that down here, D equals negative seven. So now we still need to find D sub X, D sub Y, and D sub Z. The way that's done is you take the three constants right here, and in the first case, replace the first column with these three constants. Then you replace for, for d sub y the second column by these three constants. And then to find d sub z, you replace the third column by those three constants. You do it each time, and then again you evaluate that determinant. So d sub x is equal to, uh, notice instead of the first column, 1, 0, 2, we write negative 1, 1, and negative 7. And the other two columns remain exactly the same. So we end up with 
negative 1, 1 and 0, and 0, 3 and negative 1. And now we evaluate the determinant to find the value for d sub x. So the way that works is we take the first number right here, negative 1, and we multiply it times, remember we get rid of this row and this column, we have those four numbers right there, so it's 1 times negative 1 minus 0 times 3, which is 0, so 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Then we take the negative of the second number here, that's the negative times the negative 1, multiply times the determinant of the 2 by 2 determinant, which is 1 and negative 7, and 3 and negative 1. So we multiply 1 times negative 1, that's negative 1, and subtract 3 times negative 7, which is a positive 21, because we're subtracting the product of this times this. So we have negative 1 plus a positive 21, that gives us a positive 20. And finally, again, we get a 0 over here, so this would be 0 plus 0 times the product of these two minus the product of those two. That would be times a plus 7. Of course, we don't need to do that because it's already a 7. So here we have a negative times a negative is positive. We have 20 plus 1, which is 21. So d sub x is equal to 21. Now we need to find d sub y. So again, we take the first determinant d and replace the second column by the three constants on the right of the equal sign. So to find d sub, x, uh, d sub y, this is equal to, we repeat the first column, which is 1, 0, 2, and the third column, which is 0, 3, negative 1. And then we replace the middle column, negative 1, 1, 0, by negative 1, 1, and negative 7. And then again, we evaluate that determinant. So this is equal to the first number right here, 1, multiply times, and again, think about it, you get rid of this and this, and you're left with those four numbers, so you multiply those two and subtract the product of those two. So we get negative 1, and then we're going to subtract a negative 21, which is plus 21, because subtracting a negative 21 is the same as adding 21. So now we take our next number and we subtract minus a negative 1 and then we're going to multiply that times again when you get rid of this row and this column you end up with those four numbers so it's 0 times negative 1 which is 0 minus 2 times 3 which is minus 6. And finally we take the third number which is still 0 so that will be plus 0 times whatever. We don't have to work that out. So here we end up with a um, positive 20 minus times a minus, which is plus, times a minus, which is negative. So we end up with 20 minus 6, which is 14. And so d sub y is equal to a positive 14. And now we're ready to find the third number, d sub z. And to find d sub z, what we have to do is, well, we take the original determinant right here and replace the third column by the constants to the right side of the equal sign. So we repeat the first column, 1, 0, 2. The second column, minus 1, 0, uh, minus 1, 1, and 0. And for the third column, we end up at negative 1, 1, and negative 7. And again, we solve that determinant the same way as the others. So this is equal to the first number right here, which is 1, times the product of these two minus the product of those two. So we get a minus 7 minus the second number. And that would be minus 1 times the product of these two minus the product of those two. So 0 times negative 7 is 0. And minus 1 times 2 is a minus 2. And then plus this number right here, which is a negative 1. And we multiply that times the product of these two, which is 0 times 0, minus 1 times 2, which is a minus 2. Okay, simplifying that, we get minus 7, minus times a minus times a minus, which is a minus 2, and plus 2, they cancel out, so we get a minus 7. So, 
d sub z equals a minus 7. So now we're ready to solve for x, y, and z because x is equal to d sub x divided by d, which in this case is equal to d sub x is 21, and d is equal to 7, which gives us oop, minus 7, which gives us a minus 3. So x equals minus 3. And I really love this part of Kramer's rule where we can simply solve for x, y, and z. y is equal to d sub y divided by d. So in this case, d sub y is 14, and d is minus 7 to get a negative 2 for y. And finally, for z, we get d sub z divided by d, which is equal to d sub z. d sub z, where are we? Right there, negative 7. Divided by d, which is negative 7, which is a positive 1. So those are the values we get for x, y, and z. So now let's check to see if we got those correct. It says, find the three numbers such as the difference of the first and the second number equals negative 1. Here's the first number, here's the second number. So negative 3 minus a minus 2 is equal to negative 1. So that checks. Second one, the sum of the second number and 3 times the third. The second number, minus 2 plus 3 times a positive 1 equals a positive 1, which is what it should equal. So that checks. Finally, the difference of twice the first number and the third number. And the difference, so the twice the first number, so 2 times the first number, which is minus 3, minus the third number, which is a 1. So minus 6 minus 1 is minus 7, and that indeed is what they're telling us. So notice we checked all three variables against the three expressions that gave us the three equations, and they all worked out. And so the, sum is, the result is that x equals negative 3, y equals negative 2, and z is equal to 1. And that is how it's done. That was painful. <laughs> I like Gramer's rule, though. You didn't it's, make a mistake. I did make a mistake. I had to go back and do it again. That doesn't work out. Oh, oh, oh. I made a boo-boo. i got to go back. Yep. Same thing again. I copy and don't carry the sign properly. Again. Could you just substitute the i in the equation you already wrote? True. Uh, once you get one of the variables, you can then substitute that. You can do a combination again. Oh, the equations right there. You already wrote down the equations. Yes. Equations. So once you have. What you're saying is, once you have D... No, once you have the answers X, Y, and Z, you're reading out the numbers. Oh, that's true. I don't have to do it like this, but I'd like to go back to the original problem. The reason is, we might have made a mistake in writing the equations down, and then the numbers wouldn't match the original problem. So there is a reason for the madness. <laughs>